How's it going there, everybody? Happy Monday. Excited to be back with you guys again. Uh, we got Shane from US Meat Channel. He has got some great information for us uh, regarding some updates and new uh, news here in the cannabis industry in 2024. So excited to talk with you, Shane. How are you doing today? You know what, Sam? My day is awesome. I've had some great conversations. The sun is shining, and now I'm on a show with you. So it's headed in the right direction. Awesome. Well, it's definitely an honor to be with you here today. I really wanted to learn a lot more about you before we break into your brand here. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started as an entrepreneur? What led you to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, just, I don't know. I started very young. I was that kid in um, <clears throat> in seventh grade that was, you know, selling Jolly Ranchers <laughs> for a, a little couple pennies extra each, you know. I just started early and uh, I don't know. I just like to work. So, you know, that's, I even got a job before I was allowed to work. You know, you're supposed to be 16 when you get a job. I, a couple of friends of mine got a job at Wendy's uh, hamburger place. And uh, I was like, you made how much money? I'm going to go there. Cause I had a motorcycle and I needed to make gas money. And so that's really why I started But I've just always been slinging stuff from, Jolly Ranchers to weed to, you know, now we're selling ad space. Yeah, so a full-time hustler might be the word if we're going to use a kind of a bad word there. That might be the best word to describe <laughs> you. <laughs> Business creator. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, okay. Um, let's let's talk about US Weed Channel. I'm actually really excited to talk more about it. Um, you got a great platform. I'm curious to learn more about why you started US Weed Channel, what kind of led to your uh, inspiration for starting it. Um, I love this story. And so really it's, it's, I'll summarize as best I can and I'll try to make sure that it's still got some poignancy to it. But what happened was in 2010 at the beginning is somewhere in there um, in the middle, I was growing cannabis for the local dispensary in town. And I noticed that that person was doing some nefarious things, taking pills, doing drugs. And I knew it was just a matter of time before they were in trouble with the law. So I endeavored to look into starting my own dispensary, what it would take, right? My background is commercial insurance. It can't be that hard. It's, you know, I'm the person who used to dot the I's and cross the T's for underwriting. So I'm sure I could do it for this. And I did. So I ended up starting uh, Granddaddy Phoenix, which is America's first actual uh, cannabis delivery store on wheels. You can still see pictures of it on Facebook. Look up Granddaddy Phoenix and you'll see it. It's a minivan with a display case and a computer and everything. So we did that, right? And we did it by the book, just like I used to do with my insurance. I did everything by the book. Three months into it, I was arrested anyways uh, on my birthday, just to cap on it. <laughs> we won't even go into that. But uh, so despite having all the paperwork and all the licenses that you could have, period, um, they're like, yeah, can you please turn around and put these cuffs on? And let's go. So Man. Th that was a problem. Oh, it was horrible. And so the first part was that I reached out to everybody. I reached out to all of our cannabis support groups. I reached out to all the media groups here in Southern California everybody saying, Hey, I'm the one that's following the law, the courts and the cops and the DAs, they're all breaking the law. Here's how it's happening. Nobody replied. Nobody even got back to me, bro. Not even a reply email, like nothing. And, uh, so I knew that cannabis didn't have a voice. I knew that everything out there that was saying that they were a voice for cannabis, it was bullshit. And, you know, that's that was my first big lesson besides the the actually my second lesson. The first lesson was thinking that the cops would follow the law if I was. So now I'm in court and I'm going through all the roles and all of that. And it was about nine months into it because they keep you coming back. And uh, it was a weird day because during those nine months, you're very introverted. You're, you're looking at all the things you've lost. You're looking at all the, the disappointment that's happening and how you're going to come out of this pit, you know, that you're, you're in, that the laws created and blah, blah, blah. Well, this particular day, I was able to look around instead of look inward. And what I saw were dozens of families that were good people that you would be at their barbecue. They could be at your barbecue. Good people, right? And 
none of them had any hope whatsoever because at that point, well, first of all, they were all there for cannabis related issues and none of them had any hope at all from the legal system. So this, at that time, cannabis was like the one thing in the world that when you went to court for, you automatically lost, period. That's it. They had a 1000% batting average. And so, I mean, there were people going to court for murder that were looking at ways to get off, right? But, <laughs> right? Like tax evasion, murder, all sorts of shit, rape. They're looking at all these ways to get off. You go to court for weed, a legal weed store, when you file the paperwork and all that, you're, you're no, you're losing. So when I saw all these people, I'll never forget that day, man. I was like looking at my district attorney and the plan originally was to just sort of wait it out until weed wasn't so bad and then take whatever lumps I was going to take. That was the plan for him mostly. Um, and I leaned in, I said, dude, we're, we're fighting this. That's just it. We're just doing it. And, and, you know, he was like the F we are. And I said, no, we got to change direction. And like, this is what we're doing. And regardless of how we got to do it, this is how we're doing it, you know? And man, he didn't like that. But bottom line is we did. And I became the first person in America to get unanimous, not guilty for running a pot store. So before me, everybody was guilty. 1000% batting average for the courts after me, people could be free. Boom. And that was cool. And during that process, I was so peeved and I was telling my friend, I was going to film school and I had this friend Genevieve and I was like, man, there's no voice, right? This, that, and the other. She goes, you know, I think there's this thing called Roku and you can, anybody can start a TV network on it. And I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> so I started looking into what it takes to create a TV network on Roku and I never looked back, man. And it was, that was just it. My whole goal with the channel was a, to create a voice B to keep our people safe. Right. And since then it's blossomed into, it can do all of that. Right. So our, our next step is that, but it also, like our cannabis content creators, they can't monetize their content. I solved that problem. So all the cannabis content creators can now come to US Weed Channel. We can monetize from the first view, literally. They don't even have to hit an algorithm or anything. So that happened. Our brands, as you know very well, they're hamstrung in so many different directions when it comes to marketing, right? And so they can now reach 165 uh, country, excuse me, 145 countries or their local zip code. So that's like what you guys did with your pioneer ad. Same thing. We, you know, you guys are everywhere, but people can go targeted. They can do everything they want. So that's what's happening with our next level software. Um, by myself, literally with all this, you know, pissed off in this and all whatever, I got us America's first ever openly cannabis uh, intellectual properties that were issued to the public. So our weed leaf logo and that little R right there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the first in America. I love first, bro. Like I'm all about first. So we're the first public access cannabis TV network. I'll go back. Let me go back. Cause it's a good little story. So I was talking with Roku and, and I wrote them, you know, and I said, look, I want to write here's, I met all your criteria and I wrote them the email and I submitted and they were like, no, <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah. Who would want that right away? Oh my gosh. And so I was all bummed out because I had already filmed a pilot for 420 Honeys and all this stuff. And I, and I was ready to go, man. And so I wrote them back and I was super diplomatic at the time for being filled with angst. And I was like, hey guys, I understand the knee jerk reaction to cannabis, but please understand that I can see cannabis dealing and cocaine dealing and heroin use. And I did like 13 things and they all just got worse. Right. And it ended with like witchcraft and beheading and disembowelment uh -huh. dot, dot, dot. Oh, dot, dot, dot. And other things the Bible doesn't even know how to list on Roku channels that are out there right now. And so I was like, dude, I can see it all already. So we're not doing anything new. And I'm like, you know, please reconsider. 
if you know, here's our eight shows that we want to make. There's no TNA. If we cuss, it's because we're laughing too hard. That was literally the line that I put in the email. And so it took like two and a half weeks. I thought I was, I thought I was just dead in the water. Right. I thought it was just over. And then finally I get this email from them and they're like, yeah, okay. You're the first guy like ever in history who's going to have a public access cannabis TV network. Like you have permission. And then uh, simultaneous with that, one of the girls that was in the 420 Honeys pilot sent her boyfriend back to steal my pot plants that were in my yard. My neighbor saw them, called the cops 911. The cops caught them, let them steal my plants, and didn't tell me anything. It took me four days to figure it out. This is a whole different part of it. <laughs> this is a whole other reason for you, Sweet Jam. The cops let people steal my plants at 3 a.m. in the morning and didn't tell me. And the reason was because they told my neighbor, she said, those plants are Shane's. They're like, no, they have a doctor recommendation. We're going to let them go. But we'll keep an eye on Shane. Well, then I brought the ball to them because I'm already fighting it in Orange County, right? I know my laws. And I'm like, I want to talk to the cop who came here and let people steal my private property, who colluded with the criminals to allow them to steal my private property. So they immediately threatened me like five times on that call that, that, you know, don't open that can of worms, the whole thing. Now I'm triple pissed, right? So I, I write away to the local papers in Temecula. They don't get back to me, but one guy gets back to me of the three and says, start your paper trail. And it gives me a link to like internal affairs. It's called something different in Riverside County. And so I start and I make a complaint, right? These guys are threatening me. I'm, I want to know what happened. Like, this is my stuff, right? Yeah. And that turned into a whole thing. Like that's, so the cops came to my house to take my, you know, testimony or whatever. All they did was look at my doctor rec to figure out that it was going to expire pretty soon. So they could figure out what day they would come and try to arrest me with an expired recommendation. I told that to, so then I called the internal affairs guy. He comes, Inspector Green. I shit you not, that was his name. (laughs) And uh, so I recorded him. I filmed him from the other side of the room, like private camera that they didn't know about. So I have all this. And uh, he's like, why am I here? Is it because the officer was Kurt? And I said, no, the adjective you want to use is he was threatening to abuse his power and arrest me because... I was threatening to expose his buddy and they're going to come here and try to make me a criminal to say, Oh, Shane is a criminal before I can say they're a criminal. And you're here to stop that mayhem. He was bummed, man. Cause I knew exactly what to say. It was on his recorder, the whole thing. I kid you not, bro. He go the next day he goes on vacation for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be good, huh? Dude, you can't make this shit up. This is the honest to God truth. So the next day he goes on vacation for three weeks, and on 420, 2012, I'm raided by the Temecula Police Department, Sheriff, whatever, cannabis task force, right? They kick holes in my walls, they take the rest of my plants. They take all this stuff. They accuse me of, of all this stuff. And they're like, you know, where, where are you stealing electricity? And I'm calling them names and shit like that. And I'm all pissed off at that. I knew they were coming. And I was working out for like four weeks because I was ready to just beat some ass. And uh, <laughs> and uh, they knew it, man. They, they just knew I was not going to be a very friendly person to arrest. And so I was like, dudes, you better have your shit straight because I follow the and law and i mean i was cussing at them and they're like dude you're like a person that's on crack i'm like first of all drink the fucking kool-aid like oh dude it was gnarly excuse my language on your podcast we can edit that. Okay. Okay. but uh so yeah so i had you know 14 officers in there and the crazy thing is one of them was this guy jim that i studied krav maga with for like three years so he knew like if you're going to set Shane off, bros, like he's a level three in Krav Maga and this shit ain't going to stop with like a couple hits. Like he's going to bulldoze through seven of us before we're able to un, 
you know, <laughs> get the breath out of him because that's what you do, right? And we were full blown at that time. So anyways, instead of going that direction, I started making jokes with one of the younger cops and stuff. And all the other cops were just laughing their ass off silently because this kid was trying to burn me. And anyways, we'll get into that at a later date. So now what happens is now I have to get out of two court cases. And uh, so what happened was they lied to the district attorney and told that in Riverside and told him I was a dealer to get the warrant. And they took my guns and my weed and everything. And I was like, hey, here's what really happened, Mr. D.A., they lied to you to do this and this and this. And the district attorney was like, here's your no charge letter. We're sorry. And uh, you can use that to get your guns back. And yeah, so I did all of that. And, but it was still, I got run out of town basically. You know, oh, I had yeah, to, they were witch hunting you before you even had a chance to even get your platform up is what it seems like uh, for my end. It put us down for two years. So I didn't get to launch until 2014 after that. Yeah. So I had to move and recover and do all this crazy stuff and go to court for another two years. Um, but we launched in 2014. Hey! <laughs> uh, and so our 10 year anniversary is coming up. Actually, I tried to launch on 420, but I wasn't able to get it approved until April or May 14th. So our actual 10 year anniversary on Roku is uh, May 14th of our live date. Yeah, so that'll be coming up. But what happened was all that time in the last 10 years, we weren't allowed to monetize. So there's been, we've been what's called brand cuffed. So my destiny and 209 million people's education and entertainment in the world of cannabis has been hampered by brands who don't support the artists, right? They don't support the art of our industry. And that's a problem. Because every other industry, somebody makes some content, it monetizes, then they're able to make the next level, which is better, and so on and so on. Well, cannabis is continually stuck at level one because the content creators can't monetize. And so that's what I've solved, right? That's what we're solving. And so and this kind of leads into my next question. So you're going to get actually a good start on it. It's basically what kind of benefits USB channel offers to the cannabis community. And so right off the bat, I think we're kind of getting into one where it offers them a platform where they can go and monetize their own content. Well, what else would you say? You know what? And I apologize, Sam. I probably shouldn't have babbled that long because I knew you had other questions, but uh, oh, no, we're, we're, you're doing great. We're doing great. This is good content. This is actually a really great story of how you started the first ever we channel. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. And uh, you know, I just try not to, I try to let, let it be more conversion conversational uh, thing anyways. Okay. So, so, okay. So yeah. So benefits actually, again, it, it started to create a voice uh, and save families, right? Man, has it melded since then? I mean, literally every leaf of the weed leaf in our, in our logo, represents a different party of who it helps, you know? So obviously the viewers for the first time ever, since now we can monetize. So again, we're an approved Google ad publisher we're approved to promote our content across all social media, all this great stuff. How that helps everybody is first of all, content creators can monetize. So the content gets better. Viewers get better content because I have had competitors and what they do is they launch and then they realize they can't monetize and all of their content ends up looking like an infomercial. And that gets boring. Nobody wants to watch all infomercials. We want game shows, sports shows, dramas, comedies, movies, documentaries, right? All this great stuff that make up a TV network. So with all of these permissions, that's what we now have the opportunity to do as an industry. All of our movies are now can be monetized through our channel and go global. All of our TV series, right? which means all the entertainment and education, the edutainment, if you will, <laughs> gets to go through to all of the viewers, right? And what that does is it changes the media narrative on cannabis and everybody in it. Because right now we're subject to what everybody else says. So if they say we're stoners or we're thieves or we're black market people or whatever they say, we are at this point to the rest of the world. That's baloney. That's bullshit to me. So we as US Weed Channel now get to actually carve and create our own ecosystem and change the media narrative across the board. Because if anybody else starts to spew the bullshit, we will make fun of them 24-7 until they never, ever do it again. Yeah. Right? 
<laughs> so there's that. So the content creators, the viewers, they get all the bonus. Uh, the brands now have a place with unlimited views, right? So we don't charge per impression. We charge per time on the channel because that's not really where we make our bread and butter. That's sort of where we pay for some base stuff to get going. This is the neat thing with US Weed Channel, what's happening next. We're going from brand cuffed, where we needed the brands to participate. Well, now we don't. And of course, now that we don't, they probably will, right? So, but the thing is, every time somebody watches a show on US Weed Channel, it's monetized with ads. If they don't want the ads, they can pay for subscription. That still allows us to grow, right? It allows us, whether they have the money to participate or not, they can still participate. So all of that stuff is happening. We're launching a meme coin, which is about to explode in about a week. Um, the what apps. The meme coin? You got to tell us what it is. It's still secret. <laughs> it's still secret. But yeah, it's super cool. Where do you see it? It's like, yeah. So it's actually part of a series of meme coins. So that's part of this great design that we have to help, again, help bring better content to the viewers. And how we do that is through monetization. So right now we're a startup company, right? I mean, literally, I wasn't thinking of it like this. I was not able to monetize US Weed Channel for eight and a half years. I just had to pay for whatever videos people watched. And this is a person who just had multiple arrests, right? And felony charges. And you don't go right back to your white collar job after that. You have to go back to being a mechanic and doing all of that stuff that you did when you were a teen. And so that's what I've been doing for years is like I've been a mechanic, right, to, to support U.S. Weed Channel. And only a year and a half ago or so did our intellectual properties come through. And that's another great story. So when that little R came through, I'm sorry, ask your question and then I'll tell the story. So I, those are the benefits. Literally, the benefits are widespread. Every single person that deals with U.S. Weed Channel benefits. Oh, last part of it. Who else benefits? Not only our advertisers, but now since we're federally certified, all of the, the Coca-Cola's, the Pepsi's, the Verizon's, the Capital One's, they have that safe passage to the island of Cannabia, right? And so now they get to determine, do they want to be the first company, the first mainstream brand in their market to support the global cannabis community with a concert, a news show, something right? That tells the, the community, our global community worldwide, that we believe in you. We know you, we realize you, we, you know, you're a country to us now and you're on the map. And that's what, and that is really the huge benefit to our early advertisers who will be the cannabis brands, right? Because their ads will still be floating all over us. We channel to be in shows and things like that. And when those mainstream companies come and they spend millions of dollars on their marketing campaigns, because they do, who's going to benefit from that? The pioneers that are in our plan right now, like you guys. So, yeah. Yeah, no, great, great stuff. Uh, let's keep it moving on a little bit. I, I really, one of the things I'm really curious about is the kind of content that you've seen uh, perform the best on your channel. And what, what would you say as a, somebody as a content creator who wants to come in, uh, maybe even pitch a show idea or something like that to you? What typically works the best? What would you recommend? Honestly, it's it, people don't want, they love education, but let them find it. Every, the, the, chant, the show that everybody was like, you can't make that, right? It's called 420 Honeys. Has a super salacious title, right? It just makes you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to see tons of TNA, right? It's just a bunch of super cute, fun stoner girls having fun at our mansion, we go and do some fun stuff. They do some fun, you know, sports. They get dressed up and they do things with paint. So they get dirty and stuff. And we get, we have some great edibles and food and things like that. We feature chefs. It's literally the first show for 98% of the people that come to US Weed Channel. They watch 420 Honeys, then 420 News, uh, then Cannabis Cookery, then Happy Farmers. And then they dive into everything else. So if you're going to come to me, Come to me with a series, you guys, and don't come with a single idea. This is what I tell everybody because I get them all day long. If you're going to come to me with an idea, I need two answers. 
what is going to make people come back and watch the second episode? And what's the cliffhanger at the end of season one? If you have those two answers, we should talk, right? Because that means you've thought about it and you've put something into it. And like, it's not just, oh, we should. Yeah, dude, I get that all day, right? Like, no, put some thought into it and then we can talk. And then my answer will probably be, well, why wouldn't we? Yeah, good stuff. And also another thing for those who are interested in doing uh, being part of the advertising pioneer program, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that, how that works, what kind of visibility they'll get? Your mic is going out, Sam. Yeah, can, sorry, let me, let me rephrase this one more time. So another thing I wanted to ask about was the pioneer advertising program. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we got together with another uh, company in, in Canvas who their market, what they sell is literally they have uh, 4.5 million super, super hyper targeted emails, literally 128 touch points on all of these uh, emails that they've got. And um, that's their market. They help other cannabis companies buy and sell, you know, uh, campaign to 25,000 to a million emails at a time. So that's how they help companies grow. They're a pioneer like us, right? They're they're helping other companies grow. We're helping other companies grow. So we got together with them and said, hey, what's, what's like a base cost on your email thing to do the same thing? We'll put together a base cost for an advertising thing on us and we'll call it the pioneer program. And that way, when people come in, they'll get your email service of hyper-targeted. They'll get our global advertising or local, however they want to do it. And now we've got this more 360 sort of a, a advertising campaign, right? Um, and, and that was just the beginning of it, really. Uh, that So what that does, just that part alone, in cannabis, as you know, every brand stands alone. And they're like, please see my social you know, posts. Please come to my website. I'm all alone. This is just me. That's all I can do. When people buy into the Pioneer ad program, like what you guys have, it's it means that everybody's brand benefits them, but it also brings in all those other people that all the other brands are bringing in and all those other ads and all those shows and all those hosts, right? So what happens is you get this crazy effect. Nobody stands alone anymore when they're part of US Weed Channel. You get an amazing osmosis effect of all these influencers and stuff, right? And then I got Nutsy Cuckoo and I just partnered with this affiliate group where they've got thousands and thousands of cannabis affiliates that can reach hundreds of millions of targeted cannabis users. So we're talking not only the, the we're selling 21 pioneer ad spots and then we're moving up to the next level and then it goes into show sponsorship and stuff like that. But just those 21 spots Every week, we'll be giving them clips. Here's your new clip, right? Put it out with your affiliate link so they can offset their advertising costs with us, hopefully down to zero. Yeah. Because a lot of cannabis companies have a huge email list and followers, but they can't market to them very well, and they can't monetize it. Well, let's make some rent money, right? Let's yeah. get everybody into business. That's what I'm all about, like everybody into business. So if we can offset your ad costs, still market the crud out of you, and now and then even double that. Now you're making some money off of it because of your the content that we're bringing in. But 20, you know, advertisers times 20 shows times 20 hosts times 20 guests times a bunch more smaller advertisers in those shows times all the affiliates. And all of those people are pointing to us. We channel because we're putting out that new piece of affiliate use content. Right. And we're yeah. sending it to all of our advertisers. That's the huge difference. That's what we've created. Yeah, I think this is a really great deal too, honestly, especially considering there's only, what you said, 21 slots uh, available. Um, I think another yeah. thing, um, anybody seeing that um, seeing that data point and on the fence of maybe potentially buying an advertising slot, uh, one of the questions they might be asking is, what kind of audience is going to be seeing this? Uh, what, what mm -hmm. does your reach look like? I mean, if you have any good data points, have you seen some good ROIs for people who've signed up? 
Well, and here's the thing. We've just started selling. So I took on all the risk for US Weed Channel, you guys, for years because it was always that little bit precarious, right? And it was like, if I just sold you a $10,000 ad and I got shut down the next day, then we both lose. So screw that. That's not my game, right? So I just incurred it and whatever, and, and that's the deal. But here's the here's what we can do right now, and here's what I do know. Just on Roku alone, I have 170,000 households that have my channel installed in their home on their Roku device. That's pretty So nice. that means, right, yeah, so we're already larger, you know, five times larger than the biggest trade show in cannabis, period. And uh, with our next apps, we're going to go from Roku to all of those, to everything, literally everything with a screen and no air gap. So before people had to see our ad on social, set down their phone, turn on their TV, find us on Roku, do all that stuff, right? Now it's see the ad, boop, your app's installing. Oh, here's some options to install it on your Roku and everything else. And yeah, I know from when I pre-launched on Fire TV in a test, just a little test thing, right? I didn't advertise it or anything. I just wanted to get the approvals with our new uh, federal, you know, marks. And I did. But we only had about 15 pieces of content up there because it was a complete test. I got over 100 people subscribing a week. Subscribing, paying dollars to be on it. And I was like, okay, I don't have the manpower. I, it was starting to make the money, but I didn't have the manpower. And it would have gone, it was gone too fast on the spend and it would have gone down. So I was like, okay, take the app down. So now we have monetization on the free stuff. And that was my last answer. So now everything that I that US Weed Channel puts out, I, it doesn't have to come directly from Shane's pocket. It monetizes itself, which means that we can now grow exponentially across the board. Yeah, awesome. I'm definitely excited for the future of US Weed Channel on my end. You guys are seem like great people. Everything everything you guys do looks just high quality oh, too. Um, just a couple more questions for you, Shane. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming on here and speaking with me. Uh, first, I'm, I'm really curious uh, about what you think the future of USB channel will look like, what you are planning for the future. I don't know if you have an exit strategy. Um, what would you say what, in five years, 10 years? What, what are you going to be doing? Yeah, um, we have several options for exit. And so we don't have a definite plan, but I just went back to uh, a global accelerator, a uh, new chip, and uh, went back to school for six months effectively to learn how to deal and take on with investments. So we actually have a $3 million convertible note, Sterling, you know, I'm certified through new chip and I did all of that. Um, unfortunately, we launched on 420, new chip went bankrupt on May 5th. <laughs> so we had, it was, so, it was so horrible. I mean, oh God, it was horrible. We had like 36, 35 or 36, Investor meetings set up through their investor relations portal, and you don't get the contact information. Everyone just sets up the meetings, right? You get the contact information the day before so you can, you know, plan it toward them. We launched on 420. At 420 a.m., the press release went out. It was super cool. And literally, people started walking out of New Chip five days after that, and we never got to meet any of those investors, dude. It was... Awful. Heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. Oh, dude. No, the good news is technology has been keep catching up with us and the cost of US Weed Channel have been, you know, the the barrier to going to doing what we're doing, the cost has gone down. Not only did it go down, but New Chip also taught me some negotiation skills. So I reached out to 30 different SaaS companies and what we're doing with all this, you know, all this stuff I'm talking about with the new software it's not readily available, right? It's so it, every company out there has almost, but they're missing anywhere from six to two pieces of the puzzle. So I talked to these guys and I was like, Hey, if you can do this and you roll this in here and I even showed them where to get the software and how to implement it and do the APIs. Cause I'm pretty tech savvy. And, uh, I said, if you can do that and just, you know, charge me base cost to launch, we'll do rev share and everything moving forward. And here's the potential. And I showed him that we have a 209 million global consumer market right now. 42 million of them are in the United States. 
So literally any company that has anything to do with us wheat channel on our next thing is going to be blown the F up. Uh, I, I just say this like this, what would your company be worth today? If it was in the first set of advertisers on MTV back in the day. I remember you asked me that same question. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, and I always tell people like, dude, you, you wouldn't know because you'd have sold it by now. It'd be public and you'd be off in the Bahamas living life and on your own Island. So, um, but that's the potential of what we can do here with this channel, right? It's, it's what we plan to do. We are literally becoming that type of entity. My goal is ultra legitimacy. That's why I worked with the government, with Google. I mean, Amazon, everybody to get approvals, everybody, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spectrum it's, it's, I could go on for a long, long time. And it was, every one of those was a different negotiation, right? But it was the end result is the government thinks we're not a weed dealer. So can we just do this? And they're like, yeah, you can. Come on now. So until everybody has one of those, everybody else is a weed dealer to the, <clears throat> to the, you know, broadcast industry, right? Yeah. Well, yeah you're, and, you're type of educational cub. You know, whenever legalization comes around, that, that's when people are going to look at places like USB channel as an authority rather than that criminal weed dealer, as you're saying. No, that's about, yeah. that's about our guess. Yeah. yeah. And to, to answer your question about, right. you know, exit strategies um, and things like that, there are so many options. I mean, honestly, the obvious ones are, you know, a larger TV network, Amazon discovery network, something like that. Right. Um, those are very obvious uh, ones, but you start to think in other realms like, okay, there are some major advertising entities out there. What if you're one of those and you wanted to hold the keys to the kingdom for cannabis advertising around the globe? What would be, what would that be worth? So then we started thinking down that avenue and then it was like, well, we then, you know, I worked with 50 plus mentors, so I got killer ideas. And it was like, well, what if you keep it private? So there's that option and keep the group small and just benefit a couple of key families and then move forward that way. And oh, man. So the options that we have right now at this point are strange in the world of investor options because most companies are not nearly as far along as US Weed Channel. They do not have the traction that we have. They're not in the market that we have. I mean, every market we're in, OTT, AVOD subscription, um, cannabis, hemp, all of those have massive CAGR. They're all 20 above. And they're all, you know, like OTT advertising, that is a, that's already a trillion dollar market or it's right on the tip. So if we just get like the tiniest percentage of that, right? If we got one one thousandth of that, can you name a thousand yeah. TV networks? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely, so, think yeah, that, I definitely think that you will get accomplish your goals there. I think you're well on your way. I think maybe if I were to guess, just you may be just a little bit ahead of your time. To be honest with you, that's yeah. what I would guess. Uh, we've been talking for almost an hour now, forty five minutes, something like that. Uh, real quick to kind of turn end us off on a good note here. Uh, if someone's listening, they want to get in touch with you. Maybe want to present you with a show idea. Maybe want to do. Awesome advertising with you. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Um, and for anybody else who wants to watch USB channel, what's the best mm -hmm. way uh, to get on the channel? So it's, we, we made it. Thank you very much, by the way, for this opportunity and um, to be on the show and to give out all these links and stuff. So we made everything pretty much a short link. Uh, everything starts with bit.ly. And uh, if you like to go right to USB channel, actually, let's simplify it for everybody. Go to uh, linktr.ee. If you haven't used Linktree, that's the URL to get there. So linktr.ee forward slash US Weed Channel. And what you'll see there is a page that has a link to everything that we do, all our social pages, our Roku channel, some information on myself, uh, you know, my LinkedIn, everything is right there. And you can literally just go from there and like all of our pages. You can install our channel on your Roku. You can donate to our little cause. So right now, I'm either one advertiser away or one special donor away from launching these new apps that we talked about. So um, if they go to us, or excuse me, bit.ly bit forward slash go 
dash USWC. Go dash USWC. And right there, we're less than a thousand dollars away from launching our new apps. And once those apps launch, everybody in our industry wins. Literally, everybody wins, as you can tell. So that would be the note where I want everybody to go there. I don't care if you put in two bucks. Be part of our hero's journey at US Wheat Channel. You're going to tell people about it. You're going to be like, dude, I put in freaking 10 bucks or whatever to US Weed Channel to make them start, right? And this is history that we're making, guys. Like, this is it. This is uh. So I just say, you guys, just join the join the fight with US Weed Channel. Join our mission. Everything we do, the tide rises all ships. It doesn't matter what part of the industry you're in. We are fighting for you, right? That's what we get to do. This is Shane from US Weed Channel. So good to talk with you. Wish you all the best and excited to see some great news from US Weed Channel in the future. Amen, brother. Thanks for joining the fight with us, by the way.